Yeah, hello students and welcome to services classes. Today we are going to solve questions based on analogy and we are going to solve only the English portion today, including five questions for today's class. So let's start. Now, uh, starting with question number 16. Uh, now, now let, let me first tell you about the directions, what you need to focus on. You will be given two words. You need to understand the relationship between those two words. And then you have to establish that kind of similar relationship between the words which are provided in the options below. Okay. So first uh, option which is given to you is range and mountains. Now we all know what is a range. Range means uh, like a series of mountains or series of hills you can say. That's range. And mountain means you all know what is a mountain. It's a, it's a big peak. It's a, it's a high peak. Okay. So uh, we can understand the relation like this. Suppose this is a mountain. We can say these are the mountains and the entire thing forms a range okay so this kind of a relationship we need to establish between the uh, options which are provided below let's start with option number a which says atlas and maps now what is an atlas atlas means a book of maps it shows um, the maps in uh, zoom uh, zoomed version or you can say it shows a little bit a little portion of a particular country or a particular state or a particular physical feature of any kind of a country atlas is a book of maps and maps itself uh, shows uh, a part or the entire country the characteristics of uh, the physical features of any country or any state or any district or any colony uh, we can consider this point but we need to we need to find a relationship just like as it is shown in range and mountains so let us move on to the other options if we find other better options obviously we are going to move over to that kind of option let us move over to option number b plain and prairie now plain means plain land which we have which we normally have in the northern plains that's the plain land and prairie means grassland okay so this will also not uh, go because it's not making any sense with the question provided let's move over to option number c that is string and beads now string means it's it's kind of a rope like this okay it's, it's kind of a rope and beads are like a uh, small small uh, circular uh, these kind of beads are there uh, these little balls are beads if suppose we put uh, these beads in uh, like in one row it forms uh, a series of beads and we can relate it with range like in a range what happens many mountains are there in a series and even in a string if we put um, beads one by one in a series we we can we can see it forms like a range of mountains so definitely we can go over we can uh, select number c as the correct option for number 16 but as we already have decided in the other classes that we need to choose the best option possible for number 16 so now we need to go through the other options also let us move over to option number d and just check these options the first op uh, the first word says novel and the other word is short stories now novel what is a novel novel means a book which which has only one story okay the entire novel or the entire book is based on only one story and what are short stories short stories are different different stories uh, which are exactly not short but it's given in brief okay so novels and short stories are not going with uh, the question provided so let's move over to number e now number e says sea and rivers now you all know what is a sea uh, it's it's a body of water and what are rivers rivers normally are smaller bodies of water which normally drains into the sea so sea is a bigger body uh, so from the options as we have discussed, we can see that number uh, C, uh, C goes the best with range and mountains. So obviously number C would be the correct option that we have chosen. Let us move over to question number 17. Question number 17 says excessive and moderation. Now excessive um, means too much of something and moderation means it, like in middle like not too much not too uh, not too less also okay in moderation somewhere in the middle so we need to uh, find out this kind of uh, a meaning between two words in the options provided like the first option says extensive and duration and extensive means like in a, in, a, in a large surface like spreading or um, over a large surface you can see and duration means time 
uh, extensive you can say no, like large scale covering large area okay and duration means uh, time so no this won't go as it is not making any sense with the question provided let's move over to option number b arbitrary and courage now arbitrary means it's like something which is based on random choice or personal whim uh, like rather than any kind of reason or system like something which is not based on a particular reason okay it's like a randomly you are choosing something randomly you're, you're giving your opinion that is arbitrary like sudden without any proper uh, backed up knowledge or something okay Courage means obviously the strength that you have with, um, like within you, that is courage. So once again, arbitrary and courage is no way going with the question provided that is excessive and moderation. So we are not going to consider it. Let's move over to option number C, that is impulsive and reflection. Now what is impulsive? Impulsive means acting or done without forethought, like mm, not thinking like you are doing something without any kind of a second thought or any kind of a primary thought you are doing something impulsively um, and reflection you all know no, reflection means something which is reflecting or uh, you can say something which you are getting reminded of you can also say uh, reflection uh, can have that kind of meaning like getting reminded of something okay so um, if, if if i put um if I, if I try to relate these two words together, that is impulsive, like uh, without any forethought and reflection, um, this uh, can go with excessive and moderation. Let us relate uh, the question with number C. Why did I say that number C can be the best option provided um, to the question? The best answer for the question. Excessive means too much and moderation means in like, in between not too much not too less and if I go over to the option number C that is impulsive that is without any kind of th thought second thought you are doing something or you are telling something and if I talk about reflection that is uh, the second word which is provided with uh, impulsive we uh, come to know that reflection means uh, some kind of uh, uh, some kind of memories that you are having or you are thinking something and then you are answering that is reflection you are thinking about it you're giving a second thought to it and then you are answering okay so, uh, so we can say that this one and this one are kind of like the both these words are having opposites uh, with each other like excessive and moderation are basically opposites and impulsive and reflection are also becoming opposites so definitely i would suggest number c would be the correct answer for number 17 but once again we are going to check the other options also number d says distinguished and reverence like distinguished means differentiated like you are di like you're differentiating something and reverence means like deep respect for someone or something like you're respecting someone okay so once again this won't go with the question provided let us move over to number e expensive and cost like expensive means too much costly and cost means obviously the price so once again this is not going with the question provided so the final answer that we choose is number c let us move over to number 18 that is deadbeat and pay. Deadbeat means an ideal or a feckless or disreputable person. In simple words, we can say a deadbeat is a loafer, like who doesn't have any proper work to do, keeps on roaming about and that's it. That's, that is known as deadbeat or loafer. What's the meaning of pay? Pay means you're paying something, you're paying for someone. Okay, that is you know the meaning of pay it's expenditure or expense so um, someone who is not working deadbeat and uh, you are paying so pay and deadbeat doesn't go with each other you see uh, the words which are provided in the question because you see deadbeat is a loafer so obviously he doesn't have any kind of income and pay means expenditure expenses so obviously these two can be framed as opposites so let us uh, f find out this kind of a relationship uh, between the words which are provided below the best relationship which suits this question will be chosen as the correct answer
Let us start with killjoy and lament. Like killjoy means a person who deliberately spoils the enjoyment of others. But uh, if, if I connect it with deadbeat, that is killjoy and deadbeat, if I connect, obviously it won't go because um, you see uh, deadbeat is the person who keeps on roaming about it's kind of a loafer who doesn't earn anything and killjoy killjoy on the other hand um, talks about a person who spoils the enjoyment of other people so if we see deadbeat and killjoy both of them are not uh, relating to each other so obviously number a won't go uh, okay let us discuss the meaning of lament now lament means to wail or cry you can see crying out loudly that is lament so obviously this uh, option just won't go with the question provided so number a won't go let us move over to number b that is spoil sport and refrain now spoil sport means a person who behaves in a way that spoils others pleasure like it's kind of similar to killjoy the first option which is provided and uh, uh especially by not joining in any activity now spoil sport is the person who definitely spoils the activity or enjoyment of someone else by not joining that activity all right and um, refrain now refrain means stopping oneself from doing something uh, so this will also not go with the question which is provided so number b is also not going number c daredevil and risk now daredevil means a person who has a like lot of courage in his in his heart like a reckless person who enjoys doing dangerous stuff or dangerous things so th that is the person who can be termed as daredevil and what is risk risk you all know risk means like you ha you're in danger you're too much alert about something which is not uh, good to you you are in a at, at a point of risk so that is risk um, and uh, once again if I choose this number C uh, and connect it with a question once again this won't go so let us move over to the next option that is number D die hard and quit now die hard means strong or fanatically determined or devoted to something okay and deadbeat if I if I talk about some uh, like it's it, he is a person who is feckless or disreputable okay Quit means to end. So if I connect this num point of number D with a question provided, that is deadbeat, uh, like he's a person who is kind of uh, like uh, uh, spending recklessly and, and even after not earning anything, he's spending recklessly. He's a loafer, he's a feckless person and he's an ideal and he's also like, uh, the second word with the uh, deadbeat is pay so pay means you are paying something so deadbeat and pay it's kind of like not uh, going with each other so kind of opposites we can consider but if I once again choose these two words and uh, Relate it with die hard and quit. See, die hard means I have already told you who is determined, too much determined uh, to do something, or is a fan of someone. Die hard fan. We see, we see, we we see a lot many times that I am a die hard fan of this person. So uh, die hard and quit uh, will go because die hard means you are continuously determined to achieve something and quit means you are putting end to that particular thing so you see these two are once again framing as opposites if i compare it with the question provided so obviously number d we can consider but let us check number e also because we may not know uh, number e can also go let us check number e turncoat and betray now turncoat means a traitor and betray means you are cheating you are breaking faith with someone so obviously turncoat if it means traitor then it's the job of a traitor to cheat so uh, these two words are kind of synonymous to each other but we are finding kind of antonyms like deadbeat and pay which are both kind of opposites to each other so obviously turncoat and betray won't go so number d would be the correct option let us move over to number 19 mendicant and impecunious mendicant means beggar okay and uh, impecunious means penniless so kind of uh, if i i'm writing it down beggar and uh, impecunious means penniless so you see 
beggar and penniless obviously a beggar is obviously penniless so we cannot consider uh, these two as uh, opposites but definitely we will consider it to be synonymous to each other because obviously a beggar will not have any kind of money so he will be penniless so beggar and penniless will definitely go with each other uh, if we see them as synonyms so let us check this kind of a relationship um, in the words provided and the best relationship that will suit with the question provided will be the correct answer. The first option number A says critic and quizzical. Now critic means a person who expresses an unfavorable opinion of something like we have most often heard about critics talking about cinema and uh, films. Um, they are talking about something which is not good or not favored at all by them. Okay. Critics are therefore there to take out all the bad stuff from any, uh, any anything. It, be, it can be film, it can be book, it can be any kind of uh, write-up, anything. Critics are there to take out all the unfavorable, th unfavorable things or the bad things or something which is not good for the society. Those kind of um, uh, objects are obviously taken out by the critics. And what is quizzical? Now, quizzical means puzzled. Puzzled means confused. So critic and quizzical, it's not making any sense because both the words are very different from each other. So it, it is not even making antonym nor, nor even making synonym. So I won't be considering number A. Let us move over to number B, complainer and petulant. Now complainer means um, a person who is obviously complaining and who is a petulant. Petulant means a person who is very much bad tempered like he is always angry he is always having this kind of uh, attitude aggressiveness that is petulant okay so complainer and petulant you see the meaning between the two complainer is the person who is always complaining and petulant is the person who is extremely aggressive so obviously this two can be termed as synonymous to each other so number b can be considered as the correct option to this question but let us check the other options also that is number c says physician and noble now physician means a doctor and noble means like kind or wise so obviously this won't go number d liar and compulsive like uh, liar means a person who always uh, tells lies and compulsive compulsive means ex like uh, you're bound to do something or you're bound to uh, you're uh, you are doing something or say some, saying something or you're you are determined to do something that is compulsive compulsory you have heard the word uh, compulsory so that's compulsive uh, so once again these two want to go so let us move over to option number e philanthropists uh, philanthropists Pist and uh, prodigal so phila philanthropist means a person who seeks to promote the welfare of others like this person always thinks about the welfare or the good of others okay especially by generous donation of money to good causes so a philanthropist is the person who generally donates for the welfare of the people you can see a part of the um a, a, a a part of uh, the NGO you can see many people who are in the NGO can be called as philanthropists uh, because uh, they donate a lot for the welfare of the people and uh, what is prodigal prodigal means wasteful so once again these two if I consider number E option if I take the options which are provided that is philanthropist and uh, prodigal these two can be termed as opposites antonyms but we cannot consider them as synonyms as we have seen in the question provided both these two words that is mendicant and in impecunious these two are uh, synonymous to each other like beggar and penniless but if i consider number e these uh, and uh, that is a uh, philanthropist and uh, prodigal these two are not synonymous so definitely this option will also not go so number b would be the correct option let us move over to number 20 snicker and disrespect let us talk about number 20 snicker and disrespect now snicker means giggle like you all know what is giggle like uh, kind of laughing and making a, 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 a little noise while laughing and disrespect means you are not respecting someone uh, okay so laugh 
was the first one is telling about laughing and second one is telling about disrespecting okay so uh, we, we don't find any particular relationship between these two words but let us check the options so that we can find something uh, so number a whimper and impatience now whimper means to cry and what is impatience you are not at all, uh, all tolerant, you do not have perseverance, you do not have patience, that is impatience, okay? So crying and impatience. Um, no, this won't go with the question. Uh, let us move over to number B, cautel and glee. Now, cautel means uh, laugh in a noisy and gleeful way. So you see, they are talking about... Um, uh, like kind of uh, way of laughing just like snicker and uh, cotton means um, to laugh in a noisy and gleeful way so just like giggling only like kind of and glee means uh, kind of great delight kind of great amount of happiness we can consider this point but let us check the other options also so that we can choose the best option from this from this uh, list of options provided let us check number C, frown and indifference. Like frown means to glare, to make a face. Like you are not happy with something and you are frowning. Um, you are making faces for it. And what is indifference? Indifference means uh, having kind of a uh, not so serious attitude. You are not so serious, serious about something. You are trying to give up. You are not uh, um, having that kind of uh, patience about something. So that is indifferent. So once again, this uh, won't go. Let us move over to option number D. Sneer and detachment. Now sneer means um, kind of a, a contemptuous or mocile smile, remark or tone. Okay. So... Uh, sneer um, is also a kind of uh, you can see kind of smile so till now we have found cotal to be a type of smile and sneer to be a type of smile and uh, detachment means you are like detaching from it okay you are not having that kind of attachment or that kind of emotional uh, attraction towards something. So you are detaching from it. So you see, if I consider it with the question provided, that is snicker. Snicker also means kind of smiling and sneer also means smiling. Um, and you see disrespect and detachment. They are talking about almost the same things. That is, you are disrespecting someone. And here in this option number D, detachment, they are talking about so you are detaching definitely you are not respecting someone that's why you are detaching with that person so um, we can consider number D as the perfect option till now but let us check number E also and number B which I told to consider will not go so number B is wrong let us move over to number E glower and cheerfulness now glower means to have an angry or sudden look on your face uh, like kind of uh, the previous option that is frown you can uh, you can say glower means having an angry face or sullen face and cheerfulness means you're quite happy you are extremely happy great uh, you are uh, delighted about something so that's cheerfulness so no this won't go the correct option would be number d so that was the discussion for today's class we are going to meet more with such questions and their solutions in our other classes